give people a couple minutes to get on. Uh, so I wanted to give a quick video update recapping our meeting with Governor Gordon on July 10th regarding our opposition of the Wyoming Department of Health's proposed rule changes, their lack of transparency, oversight, uh, abiding by their own rules and treatment of the uh, public during and surrounding the public comment period. On the video call with the governor and his health and human services liaison, Jen Davis, were Catherine Key, Wyoming Health uh, Freedoms board member and note taker, Allison Brady, physician's assistant and Wyoming Health Freedom contributor, Jamie Thompson, speech therapist and Wyoming Health Freedom contributor, myself, Vanda Cathy, registered nurse and board member of Wyoming Health Freedom, and uh, three state representatives, Tim Salazar, uh, Clarence Skyver, and Mark Jennings. Prior to the meeting, we were able to obtain the final Department of Health document via a representative, which was presented to the governor. And this document was, in, uh, was to include concerns and arguments uh, presented during the public comment period on October 28th by the public. Well, we were alarmed by how our concerns were oversimplified while the health department was able to present to him a thoughtful argument in return in support of their changes. The purpose of our meeting with him uh, were to express a variety of those concerns that were not fairly represented. And due to time constraints, three main concerns were addressed. Addition of the meningococcal vaccine at age 12 and 16 to the school schedule in Chapter 3, Section 4. Changes made to the medical exemption form in Chapter 3, Section 7. Changes to Chapter 5 regarding the Wyoming Immunization Information System or the Vaccine Reporting System. Interestingly, we learned on July 9th, the day before meeting with the governor, that the Department of Health withdrew their proposed rule changes, um, citing, and I quote, in light of the current COVID-19 pandemic, sorry, pandemic, in light of the current COVID-19 pandemic response, it was determined a portion of the proposed rule changes could have presented an unexpected challenge to the department's school partners, end quote. More than likely, the meningococcal piece um, for all school age children in the fall. However, we believe the rule changes with, were withdrawn for legal reasons, in particular, changing the medical exemption form. Allison discussed this in great detail during the meeting. Uh, she made a compelling argument that the state has no business in the provider-patient relationship and the decision-making there for what is best for that child. This change would require a provider to submit the exact reason for a contraindication to the state when issuing the medical exemption form or application. By the state requiring this, it goes directly against the Wyoming Supreme Court's decision in the Jones versus State of Wyoming Department of Health statute of 2001. In review of that, this case was about a young man who was uh, provided a medical exemption by his doctor for all of the required vaccines for school. And they listed, quote, history of reactions to immunizations, unquote on the form and they were denied and the state asked for more detail on the specific reactions. This ended up in the Supreme Court where the Jones family won their case that um, the child's exemption was valid and no further information was required of them. The Supreme Court investigated the statute and determined this, the statute in question does not require any reason to be given for a medical exemption. And yet you see here with the new proposed rule changes, they um, tried to require and slip the reason for contraindication in for consideration for a medical exemption. And during this meeting with the governor, we explained we, we were 
prepared to litigate this in particular if the governor signed the rule changes, this particular rule change. And we provided a letter from attorney Robert Moxley who felt this would be a strong case. The day prior to the meeting, Allison took a wonderful put together notebook and presented it to the governor so he would have that for his reference. It contained a letter um, from Wyoming Health Freedom, the petition of hundreds of names submitted through Wyoming Health Freedom of individuals who opposed the rule changes, the letter from Attorney Moxley, the Jones versus State of Wyoming Department of Health statute in the Supreme Court's decision, letters from both Allison and I, and a letter from parents um, of their recently injured 12-year-old daughter, Shaney, uh, from the DTAP uh, meningitis vaccine in January. Um, she had that, uh, those two vaccines. Um, in this case, our local health department told the parents these would be required by fall to enter school. And this, of course, is not true. And I'm intending on notifying that they, they need to stop telling parents this. And I encourage you to do the same in your area. They, um, they also wanted to um, have her be given the HPV vaccine at the same time. I cannot imagine what her injuries would have been if she had received it as well. Um, she now has many, many seizures every day. I spoke about the dangers, the expense, and the lack of need in adding the meningitis uh, vaccine to the fall school schedule. Um, in addition, I discussed tracking of vaccine status of Wyoming children and adults in the future. And the proposed rule change would make this data automatic, or storing our information just automatically. And the parents would have to opt out in a process that was set forth by the department. Even if the individual uh, opts out of, of, of their information, um, this information will be stored in an aggregate um, uh, database and these are the easiest hacked and most compromised data bases in the world. In fact, 15 of the largest breached databases were in aggregate format. Jamie Thompson gave the uh, governor an excellent vaccine history lesson, including, um, and it had to be in a nutshell, of course, um, the 1986, including the 1986 Childhood Vaccine Injury Act that shields doctors and vaccine manufacturers from liability. A vaccine court now paying out over $4 billion, and those were only the injuries that made it to court. She discussed the chronic illness condition of our children today and comparing them to the early 80s when a very small amount of vaccines were given. And she she also told her um, own moving, very emotional story of her child's vaccine injury um, that compelled her to do her own research and, and discovery of the truth about the, de the dangers of vaccines. Representative Salazar pointed out to the governor that, that the governor is receiving advice from medical professionals but he must also, as an elected official, listen to what the constituents have to tell him. I believe he wanted to drive home the need for ways that people can opt out of vaccines, and he especially pointed out that he is on the campaign trail, and he hears from many. In fact, this is one of the main topics his constituents are talking to him about, is that they will not take the COVID-19 vaccine if forced. Um, he called it Orwellian and said that there would be civil disobedience. A representative, Clarence Skyver, uh, voiced his uh, problem with mandating vaccines in general. Um, he, he said that he has four children um, injured. Uh, three of them are injured. The oldest has MS. Um, his oldest son has developmental disabilities and their youngest daughter has type 1 diabetes and there's no diabetes in their family at all. He said all of these showed up after their kindergarten shots. 
Their physician, knowing this family's history, told them to not get any, any more shots. And luckily, their youngest son, because of this, is free of chronic disease and injury. He said, um, let the parents and their doctors decide what is best, not the Department of Health. Then uh, Representative Mark Jennings um, spoke about their youngest grandson who met all of his milestones, um, but after a series of vaccine, he, uh, vaccines, he lost communication and digressed into autism. He said it was like a switch was turned off. He went from being vivacious, talking, playing to being nonverbal, and most of the time they would find him curled up in a corner. He said mandatory COVID vaccines um, subject is probably the second most talked about thing on his campaign trail. Um, people expressed they will not take the vaccine and the state has no business mandating any vaccines. He said he probably would not accept the shot either. I think all of those stories were so good for Governor Gordon to hear because I'm not sure he does. And at the conclusion, Governor Gordon agreed that meningitis is not a crisis um, at the age that the vaccine is proposed to be given. And if a person were planning to be in a crowded living situation, such as dorms in a university, they may consider this vaccine then, but currently with um, the, the COVID, um, these groups may not exist in the coming months. He said um, that he requested that the Department of Health take the rules back, giving more time for people to communicate and testify on them. And I, we found that very interesting. Um, he also mentioned two parallel COVID vaccine Indian trials and also the Moderna vaccine um, that is using a sequencing of DNA. And he knew that this had never been done before. And he said, I quote, I understand and hear you regarding your concerns about the COVID vaccine. Um, Allison wrapped it up and reiterated that we um, are asking him to reject these changes if they come across his desk again for signature. Um, she asked about the next step in the process and he said that it was his understanding um, was that they need to start the rule changing all over again. And I think it's very important to understand that earlier in the proposed rule change process, um, like uh, February or March of last year, um, they tried to um, interject genuine again in the wording for a religious exemption. And um, it was us that pointed out early on that there was already statute that stated this wording was not allowed, but a person only need to say that they have a religious exemption to vaccines. Um, the Department of Health then took genuine out of the rule changes. And when they submitted their final uh, document to the governor, they said that they determined this word need not be included as if they were the ones that caught it. We feel that they are not aware of the laws of the state when they attempt to make such changes as this, including their attempt to require specifics be provided for contraindications when the Wyoming Supreme Court had already made a ruling about this. We obviously need to continue to watch them with a microscope. They have proven that they will attempt to take away all of our rights with regard to vaccines. We want you to be full to fully understand that we did not do this process alone. You testifying and signing the petition and supporting Wyoming Health Freedom, both financially and in prayer, has made a huge difference. We all need to keep up the good fight for our children. We need to continue to be brave, never giving up. We believe this, this was a huge success and the fight will continue. Thank you. Bye.